course, we have a new installment of the Project Japan. Carbon neutrality, cutting our emissions of carbon dioxide as much as possible, is becoming a responsibility for all of us in our everyday lives. And as part of that, a shift toward renewable energy is underway. One energy source that's attracting attention is wind power. We report on how one major general contractor in Japan is working to build complex power stations to harness wind energy. Take a look. The Project Japan. Climate change is sweeping across our planet, bringing about devastating consequences for our everyday lives. Since the Industrial Revolution, the average global temperature has risen by 1.15 degrees Celsius. In the North Pole, ice caps covering an area nearly the size of Hokkaido in Japan have melted in the space of a year. While storm surges triggered by rising sea levels and massive typhoons of unprecedented scale wreak havoc around the world. Experts point to soaring greenhouse gas emissions as the primary cause. Global warming has been getting more severe in recent years, and disasters caused by extreme weather are also on the rise. Solving these problems will depend on decarbonization. Commercial industries are also taking big steps toward realizing a carbon-free society. Construction has always been an industry related to the environment. Major general contractor Shimizu Corporation is setting out to create a carbon-neutral future. We explore its latest initiatives. With climate change caused by greenhouse gas emissions having a big impact on our everyday lives, realizing a carbon-free society is a pressing issue. Even in the energy conversion field, which accounts for approximately 40% of domestic carbon dioxide emissions, there's a growing focus on renewable energy sources that release fewer pollutants into the atmosphere. Among the many alternatives, what's drawing especially strong interest is wind power. Globally, wind power is being adopted the most. Unlike solar, wind power can be generated whether it's day or night. And the relatively large output is also seen as extremely promising. As its name suggests, wind power is a method of generating energy from the force of winds. Many turbines are set up in windy, mountainous areas and along the coastline buffeted by sea breezes. Japan has installed onshore wind capacity reaching 4.2 gigawatts. And with the addition of new turbines, the country is aiming to increase that figure to 23.6 gigawatts by 2030. It's estimated that the electricity generated will be enough to power 12 million households a year. Standing 70 kilometers north of Morioka City, Iwate Prefecture, is Mount Oritsumedake, which seemingly splits the coast from the land. Constructed along its ridge line is the JRE Oritsumedake South One Wind Farm. It's one of the largest onshore wind farms in Japan delivering a total output of 46.8 megawatts from 13 3.6 megawatt turbines. The construction of this wind farm was entrusted to Shimizu Corporation, which specializes in structural engineering and analysis adapted to local topography. Since 2000, Shimizu has been constructing wind farms, primarily those onshore. And we're not just installing turbines, but are also involved in setting up power transmission lines and substations. Starting with the Minami Ehime wind farm, they've overseen the construction of numerous wind farms in difficult terrain from mountainous to coastal regions. 
In 2022, Shimizu held a 20% market share of wind farms in Japan. Behind the company's strong track record is a project delivery method called EPC, under which it oversees an entire project, from engineering to procurement and construction. We are a general contractor and are specialized in architectural, civil engineering and engineering projects. In the case of wind farms in particular, our engineering teams oversee the assembly of turbines and electrical systems, but the structural foundations of the turbines are handled by our civil engineering professionals. The strength of Shimizu is that we work as one team, combining the expertise of the engineering and civil engineering divisions to complete wind farm projects. In constructing the Oritsumedake wind farm, the company faced various challenges. The port of Kuji is 60 kilometers away, and when transporting turbine parts, the longest of which are 50 meter blades, we inspected the differences in ground elevation and drew up plans to make sure the wheels of convoys could pass through the area. We generally started moving the parts from 10 in the evening and reached the construction site by about four in the morning. That was one of the most difficult aspects of the project. They also say their environment-friendly measures won the recognition of the local community. This project was carried out in a region native to a very rare firefly species called Hotaria parvula. And we faced the obstacle of assembling wind turbines in places far from its habitat. Another condition we needed to abide by was protecting the natural scenery, and we decided on the layout through discussions with the local community. In constructing wind farms, it's essential to take into consideration the local environment and the demands of local residents. And in recent years, there's been a shift in the construction of such facilities, from onshore to offshore. Onshore wind farm development is already widespread across Japan, and there are now moves to expand such facilities offshore, where output is expected to be much higher. Offshore, there are fewer obstacles, allowing wind to flow extremely smoothly, and making it possible to generate electricity with minimal loss. Plans are underway to construct numerous offshore wind farms along the Japanese coastline. In terms of land area, Japan is 61st in the world. But if you add in exclusive economic zones, it's ranked 6th. When considering the energy needed for the future of the Japanese economy, development of offshore wind power is indispensable. And essential for the construction of such wind farms are self-elevating platform vessels to carry turbine blades and supporting structures from ports to offshore sites. A primary feature of these vessels are four legs that jack up the hull, allowing them to withstand high waves and to perform construction work under stable conditions. With a typical vessel, a one meter high wave will bring the work to a halt. And if you're installing a big turbine, it'll end up taking a long time. The construction period can be shortened by transporting as many parts as possible at once, such as the turbine blades, tower, and the cell, and large SEP vessels play a vital role. Shimizu has completed construction of the world's largest class SEP vessel, Blue Wind, at a cost of nearly $400 million. A key feature is its large size. Measuring 50 meters wide and 142 meters long, it can carry equipment and parts necessary to construct seven 8-megawatt turbines, which are currently standard at many European wind farms or three larger 12 megawatt turbines all at once. The biggest cranes of even large-scale vessels involved in wind turbine assembly around the world 
have a maximum load capacity of 1,600 tons. Our vessel, Blue Wind, is designed to be able to lift up to 2,500 tons and handle the larger turbines that will be deployed in the future. It's one of the most capable next-generation vessels. They say another advantage is that it's Japan's first self-propelled vessel of its kind, allowing it to sail to destinations without a chartered tugboat. Unless a vessel is self-propelled, it can take time for the blades, nacelle, and tower to reach the next site to be installed. The seaworthiness of tugboats is generally not that strong. So self-propelling vessels are absolutely crucial in raising efficiency. So why was a SEP vessel necessary for a construction company? One reason they cite is the difficulty in procuring such vessels from Europe. Amid rising global demand, SEP vessels are in short supply. Added to that is the time needed to transfer a ship's flag and to transport a vessel to Japan. And aside from the high leasing fees, another reason is the costs associated with being unable to operate a ship because of weather conditions and retaining workers during that time. The offshore wind power market is forecast to reach nearly $40 billion. And we're aiming to capture a big share of the domestic market. Our vessel has the capacity to allow us to reach that goal. In November of 2022, training towards the launch of Blue Wind was started. At this time, various tests are being carried out by engineers and crew including jacking the hull up and down and operating the crane, which will continue for about a month. In particular, to operate what is among the largest class cranes in the world, they developed a new simulator. Utilizing the newly implemented system, crew members are being trained to handle various situations that may occur. And in March 2023, a project will commence offshore in Nuzen in Toyama Prefecture. We're prepared to deal with what may be a hectic situation in the beginning, but we're determined to contribute to installing as many wind turbines as possible. Blue Wind, the world's largest class SEP vessel, is about to set sail. Europe has set a target of meeting 40% of its energy demand using wind power. When considering the overall scale and possibility of Japan, the situation here is no different than Europe. And I believe Japan can achieve the same target as Europe. SEP vessels promise to play a vital role in our clean energy future. Propelled by a strong tailwind, they are embarking on a quest toward a more sustainable society.